Hey guys, sorry that I'm out today. I am out for meetings. I would rather be with y'all. Um, but today is a day that y'all can work really independently. We are working on reviewing constitutional foundations. So everything you've done in your spiral um, thus far, that would be up until number six. So you should have this constitutional found foundation study guide. And it's one page, both front and back. Okay. So most of the stuff on the back is really quite straightforward, uh, but the front, that first section, is a little bit more complicated. So you'll notice that uh, in this first section you have a, a box of words, and what I'm telling you is that those words are going to be, uh, again, in another box in a word bank on the actual test. So. What I'm saying is on the test, there will be like one or two paragraphs, and you have to fill in the blanks. These are the words that are going to go into the blanks. So what you need to know is how they all connect. It's not just about defining each word, but rather knowing the definition of each and then seeing how they all connect. And what you're going to put in this blank space is you, you could write a paragraph connecting them all, uh, or you can do a word bank. And so this is going to come up frequently when we review for a test. I do word banks on the test with fill in the blank sections, and then I give you the words ahead of time, and you're going to have to know to connect them. So what we'll do is pause this, take a minute to see if you can look at the words and come up with a way to connect them that makes sense. Okay. And then I'm going to walk you through you know, how you could connect them. Okay, so right off the bat, you should see the three branches. Uh, the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. So it doesn't say branch, but you have the three words there. So what I did was, make sure you can see it, is I wrote legislative, executive, and judicial branch. And then I crossed those words off. Now the remaining words should connect. So looking up here, you have more terms. How do they relate to the three branches? The next thing I would add is what each branch does. So then I would write below each, below each, the legislative branch makes the laws, the executive branch enforces the laws, the judicial branch interprets the laws. And cross those off in the bank as you go. Now you're left with state legislature, governor, president, Supreme Court, Congress, state Supreme Court. You're left with six things. It's reasonable to assume we could split those up into like two categories. So what I've done is I looked at three of those six things and how they uh, represented the federal government's division into three branches. So I added some words. It doesn't say federal government in the word bank. Is this right? It doesn't say federal government in the word bank. But I have federal government written here. And the institution that makes laws for the federal government is Congress institution that makes law or enforces laws for the executive branch is the president and then the Supreme Court is the one that interprets laws. So I have the federal government's three institutions. Power is separated between three branches in the federal government. That would be the president enforcing the laws, Congress writing the laws, and the Supreme Court interpreting those laws. And so now in your word bank you're left with three more and hopefully you can see that those would be the institutions for the state government. So I did the same thing. Hopefully you can now fill this in easily. But if you can see here, I have the federal and state government. I added those words to the side. And then I've put in the part of the state government that makes laws is the state legislature. Your governor is in charge of the executive branch of your state government. And then we have our own uh, judiciary with a state Supreme Court at the top. So there's a nice symmetry, and the two other terms I've added is the fact that we have two governments shows uh, federalism, and then the fact that we split power among branches shows a separation of powers. Uh, let me see if there's anything else you should know for this. When we went through the Madisonian system, we put the benefits of the Madisonian system, like in a chart where we had made a T showing how separation of powers and federalism combine to really divide out power. So uh, you'll see in each of those quadrants uh, at least one benefit from the Madisonian system. 
Number four, there will be a question about the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, so you should know not only what it was, but how it related to the Madisonian system. What was the reason we watched it? On the back side, um, all pretty straightforward, but I want to talk about these principles, the six principles here. I know you're going to be tempted to put the definition down, and you, you can do that in the box, but on the test, I'm not going to be really testing the definition. I'm going to see if you can actually identify these principles. So on the test, you're going to be given an example with a place in the Constitution, an excerpt from the Constitution. And from those two, you should be able to decide if the example and the constitutional reference, if they're demonstrating one of the six principles. So you're going to need to essentially match examples with the term. So knowing the definition helps, but I, I want you to have a bigger picture than just the definition. For the formal amendment process, uh, make sure you know those two words, proposal and ratification, and the fractions involved, the supermajorities required. Um, definition of all these powers, and then an example, uh, pretty straightforward. And finally, the four cases that we went through around the room, um, they're still up for you to look at if you need them. You don't need to know every detail, but you do need to know the effect of the case. So. Is that law still valid? Whatever law was in question, has it been struck down? Um, kind of the big implications for what that means today because of these rulings. All right, and so you may work individually. I do want this to be done individually, but you can use an electronic device so long as it's quiet. So if it's loud, um, you'll be told to put it away uh, just because then it might be distracting others. And then if it looks like it's distracting you, You'll get a, a, a nice warning to put it away. You have 90 minutes right now, the whole class period, to work on this. I have set it up so that if you are here every day, that you'll be prepared and be successful. So use this time. Uh, I know some people might be tempted to say they'll do it later. Do it now. Uh, and then when you have this study guide done, you can take it home with you and review as needed or read over it the morning of. At the end of class, you can take your spirals if you still are working on this. Um, and I do not turn this in. I don't want the study guide today. I want you to take it home and over the next uh, two nights, tonight and tomorrow night, look over it um, before the test. I will collect this on the day of the test and if you take your spiral home, you should uh, return that as well. Okay, so that's what you need to get going on that. Um, finally, why you wanna get the review done. There's a few reasons why it is good to work on this. The first one is obvious. You know, it helps you review so that you do well on the test. Uh, but additionally, it will be for a, a grade. So that will be one grade in there. And then uh, it needs to be mostly complete for me to allow you to do corrections. So if you do not do the study guide, if you don't take the time, if you don't take the 90 minutes I give you here and any additional time you might need at home to get ready for the test, then I'm not going to take the time to grade test corrections because they're actually more, there more work um, to grade. But if you complete this, not only will you get the grade, but then I will let you do corrections. Uh, and corrections work, you get half credit back. So if you got a 50 and you do corrections, that could bring you up to a 75. I also don't put a limit. If you got a 90 and you wanna do the few corrections that you have, I'll let you earn up to the 95. So there's no cap on if you do too well, you can't do corrections. All that's really good as a senior because you want to make sure you're not stressed for the final. So you want to make sure your six weeks grades are at their, their highest potential and that way for the final you're not even worried. And then the final reason you want to get it done is when I collect them, I set them aside. I hold on to them so that they cannot um, get lost, so that they don't you know, burn in a fire or get eaten by the dog. And then at the end of the semester, when it's time to review for the final, and all of you ask me, is there a review guide? I'm going to say yes, and you already did it. And I'll pass back your review guides. Okay, so I'll keep it, and then you'll have it later to help you prepare for the final. All right, I will see you guys next class period.